Uh, so I'm Dan Norris, the president of the Board of Commissioners, and I'm going to call the Wednesday, May 18th commissioner meeting to order. And the first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Commissioner Pransky is going to lead us in that. I just have no brought a flag with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, and if our township manager can call the roll, please. Once he gets off. Commissioner Brock. Here. Commissioner Holland. Here. Commissioner Norris. Here. Commissioner Norris. Here. Commissioner Pransky. Here. Commissioner Rappaport. Here. Commissioner Armin. Here. Commissioner Zygmuntfeld. Here. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, number three on the agenda is the Sunshine Act announcement. Uh, Bob, is that for you or for Allison? That is the solicitor. Oh, our township solicitor, Ed. Yes, thank you. And there have been no um, executive sessions since the last meeting. So there's no Sunshine Act announcement this evening. Thank you, though. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought there was something different. Okay. Um, number four, uh, approval of the Board of Commissioners regular meeting minutes dated April 20th, 2022. Any comments or questions from the commissioners, changes? All those in favor say aye. 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 Number five, acceptance of the executive summary financial report of the manager secretary for the month of April, 2022. Questions or comments? Not seeing any. All those in favor say aye. 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 Six, acceptance of the accounts paid report for the month of April, 2022. Yes, Commissioner Rappaport has a question. Yeah, I had a question on at least one set of numbers uh, of the uh, bills paid. Uh, I don't know why it caught my eye. Uh, something about a parcel. Uh, for Lois Myers, and I, I didn't understand that. And I just thought, oh, what the heck, we'll just ask. So that would be um, a tax refund. So when Sherry puts in the requisitions for the tax refund, she puts in the parcel number. Oh, that's what it meant by parcel. Thank yeah. you. You're Danielle, right. you know, Danielle, I'm reading that? about all these all these trucks and I, you know, it's it's all about various items and I wasn't thinking property parcel. Yeah. Danielle, is that your new assistant sitting there with you? Yes, yeah, yeah. Good. I'm glad you were able to get some help. Norris, our, our problem is solved. I'm sorry? Our personnel problem is solved. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, okay, Thank thanks. Um, seeing no other questions, all those in favor of accepting the accounts paid report say aye. 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 Uh, number seven, in accordance with the Home Rule Charter, Article 7, Section 702.A.2, the Township Manager asks the advice and consent of the Board of Commissioners for the appointment of Jessica Bardo to the position of Chief of Operations for EMS. Any comments or questions, Bob, or I don't think Jessica has any comments. <laughs> Too late. Congratulations. Only that appointment is well earned. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, Do we have to vote on that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah I was going to say that was a little premature on the yeah. congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe <laughs> condolences. We've been asked for our advice and consent. All those in favor of the appointment of Jessica Bardo to the position of Chief of Operations for EMS say aye. 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 And now our warmest now, congratulations. And thank, thank you, you very much. Appreciation. Thank you. Oh, Ken, I didn't see you there. Maybe Ken might have said something, but okay. Just anyway. congratulations and you, you it's well know. deserved. It's been an honor to work with Jess. And I know she we will continue to work together. She does a great job. And um she left for a little while and then realized she wanted to come back. And it's been great having her. And congratulations. Thank you. Well, welcome back and welcome to your new position. Um, number eight, um, approval of expenditures over $2,500. 
Uh, so just as a reminder, these are various expenditures which have been recommended for approval at our earlier commissioner meetings earlier this month, whether they be public works, public safety or public affairs committee meetings. Um, we discussed these items and we recommended them to the full board. So all those in favor of approving those items say aye. 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 Okay, uh, we're up to uh, number nine, uh, public works. So I believe uh, public works, that's uh, commissioner. Uh, Whatever his name is. Yeah, Mitch, that's you. Thank you, thank you, Board President Norris. Um, the uh, Public Works Committee didn't meet in a typical two hour and 15 minute session on May 4th, and we have a number of items to consider. 9A, adoption of, of, a, of a resolution granting conditional approval for CTDA number 21-04, Land Development Plan for 450 Southeastern Eastern Road, Arcadia University Student Recreation, Elkins Park, PA 19027, for the proposed construction of a new 20,670 square foot student recreation center at the northwest end of their campus, adjacent to existing tennis courts and sports field at the existing parking and storage area. Um, there was extensive discussion during, uh, during uh, public works. Are there any questions or comments from members of the board or members of staff? Mr. Chairman, just something very minor, if I may. Commissioner Armand, please. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, uh, this is very minor and I don't, I, I looked at the resolution. I don't think it's an issue for the resolution, but, but I actually think the address is not entirely accurate in, in the agenda. Uh, 450 Southeastern Roads in Glenside, PA 19038, if I'm not mistaken. But maybe Hal can speak to that. Uh, as far as it's not uh, it, the it, entire, it, the, the entire, excuse me, the entire campus has been working under the address of 450 Southeastern Road. Not in Elkins Park, though, is, is my point. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it should it's be showing Elkins Glenside. Park. Certainly, it is Glenside address. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know if that just needs to be changed for the agenda or, or in the resolution itself, but I just wanted to point it out to make sure that we're all on the same page. Well, I got very excited because I thought we had a new opportunity to tap into another resource in my part of the township. Oh, well, Matt, there you go. You caught us. There you go. You're, you're moving uh, Arcadia. Besides, Matt, it would have been on my side of Old York Road, so it wouldn't have mattered. There you go. All right. So, again, maybe it's just an agenda item, but we should probably check the resolution before it gets signed to make sure it has the proper address. It, it does not. The resolution does not mention Elkins Park or Glenside. It just has a street address. Fair enough. Okay. We should correct. We should correct the uh, the, the regular uh, meeting agenda in minutes. So sure. Okay. Uh, any other questions or comments? None being seen, Mr. President. I'll, I'll move this to question. So all those in favor of adopting that resolution granting conditional approval say aye. 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 Thank you. Item 9B, approval of a, did I miss somebody's question? No, no I was just saying thank you to okay, all of you're you welcome. for the, the oh, process. Well, thank you from you, Hal, you're more than welcome. The, I'm not thanking you, Mitch, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I know you weren't talking to me, Al. <laughs> no, not at all, but the rest of the board, I appreciate your consideration and the passage of this resolution. Thanks, Al. Right, you're, we're done with you. Item 9B, uh, approval of a <laughs> credit policy. Uh, there is an attachment and it was a correction on an omission that uh, was not included in the original thing or additions. Are there any questions or comments from members of the board or members of staff? None being seen. So Mr. President, I will move for uh, approval on it as, as well. Okay, so this is approval of the stormwater fee credit policy, which the credit policy takes place in the second year of the stormwater fee, which means uh, next year, not this year. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. 
Item 9C, approval of a, re of a resolution amending the fee schedule of Cheltenham Township to include application fees to review requests for credits from the stormwater management fee. Um, are questions or comments either from staff or from members of the board? Okay, and I believe, Allison, didn't we go through uh, with Tony Dill the details of those things and, and discuss the rationale for those? We did, yes. Okay. No questions or comments. So, Mr. President, I'll move for acceptance of this uh, resolution as well. Uh, all those in favor of approving this resolution amending the fee schedule say aye. 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 Item 9D, approval of a purchase order for Berge's Truck Center in the amount of $305,936 for two new Packer truck cabs and chassis for refuse recyclers 606 and 607 and a purchase order for the Grand Turk in the amount of 250,000 for two new Packer bodies for the new uh, for new refuse trucks. I believe again that we had extensive discussion with both Public Works and our uh, both with Mr. Cluel and Mr. Slade to just make sure that this was an essential spend in order to maintain the service levels that we have in those areas. Are there any questions or comments from members of the board or staff? I, uh, Mr. Chairman, I was just going to uh, say, especially because it is a large amount of money, um, our conclusion was actually uh, not only was this necessary uh, to maintain the service, but the understanding is that uh, uh, this should be improving the service that our residents uh, are receiving. Um, uh, some of the opportunities that are going to be discussed in the future will be um, separate cardboard collection, um, which is certainly an, an improvement in the service and frankly, an opportunity for the township to generate some additional revenue. Thank you, Mr. Uh, President. And anybody else? Was that you, Mr. Pransky, that was ready to weigh in? No, not on this, no. Okay, okay. Any other uh, questions or comments from the board or from staff? None being seen, so I'll move this to question as well, Mr. President. All those in favor of approving the purchase order for these uh, for these trucks and chassis, say aye. 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 Thank you. Item 9E, approval to enter into a seven-year agreement with Bortec through NCL Government Capital to lease a vector, camera truck, and street sweeper at a total cost of $1,067,265.63 with an annual lease payment of $178,827.06 with the first payment to be made in 2023, conditioned upon invoicing, billing, and delivery of the vector and camera truck, not jeopardizing potential award of a local share account grant for those pieces of equipment. Um, and I believe we got into detail. We also had, uh, I believe it was Mr. Bortek talk about uh, the favorable interest rate environment that he was still able to provide uh, for us. And um, I believe uh, Ms. Elliott talked about the, uh, the opportunity for us to defray some of that out of pocket if we're able to secure those local share uh, grants for those pieces of equipment. Uh, so with just that narrative, are there any questions or comments from either members of staff or members of the board? So Mr. Chairman, Mr. I'll just- Mr. President, go right ahead. One, one further comment there. Um, the, it, should be, it should be known by the public that this large expenditure, uh, that this is going to help us with our stormwater efforts. So part of the stormwater fee that we put into place was with the intention of doing a better job managing our stormwater, the acquisition of these, uh, uh, of the uh, Vactor camera truck and uh, street sweeper will permit us and enable us to be doing a better job in that vein. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Any other comments from members of the board at this point? Well, I'll also add that potentially, if we were in possession of the Vector and camera truck, we might have had a little bit of a, a, a heads up on the, uh, the sinkhole the sink that hole. still is a, a very concerning element at, uh, at, uh, at Chelton Hills and Rogers and up to Church Road. 
And it's those kinds of tools and things that we require so that we can do preemptive rather than reactive kinds of maintenance and adjustment to these kinds of things. So I think it's really critical, again, that we're doing some of these things in advance uh, or as a result of recognizing that there's just certain things that we need in order to do their job more effectively. Yeah, so Mr. Chairman, I'll just add on to that. Uh, at the polls yesterday, I had a number of people come up to me and ask just that question. Um, how, you know, how do we know uh, that a sinkhole like that won't occur elsewhere in the township? And, and the answer is, of, of course, you never know about these things, but your point uh, that having this equipment will enable us to be doing a better job of uh, certainly with the camera truck of looking deeper underground than we are currently doing. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the board or members of staff? None being seen, Mr. President, if we can uh, call this the question as well. Okay, all those in favor of entering into the seven year agreement to lease the Vactor camera truck and street sweeper at a total cost of uh, just over a million dollars, say aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. President. I believe that concludes the active issues that needed to be brought to the legislative session. So I'll move that the Public Works Committee uh, regular meeting minutes from May 4th be accepted. All those who in favor of accepting the meeting minutes say aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Zygmuntfeld. Uh, number 10, Building and Zoning, Commissioner Pansky. Yes, uh, you, thank didn't, you. you didn't spend as much money as uh, Mitch did. Nor nearly as much time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Building and Zoning Committee did meet on May 4th with, well, well with well, whatever was left of May 4th after the <laughs> meeting. Um, and we have no active issues to bring in front of the committee right now. However, one update there was and still continues to be extensive discussion about the agreement with SPIN uh, at Caversham. And I see Anne's gonna have a question, but uh, to, to put a fine point on what I'm saying right now before she gets into this is we have nothing to bring at this point. Uh, we will be having more discussions to come up with a final consideration. Anne, go ahead. Thank you. And without trying to nitpick, um, Never I, I do need to raise some issues that were incorrect in the minutes that are pretty important on that subject. So, uh, in, uh, in those minutes uh, under new business uh, item A, uh, first, I did not say that the use was uh, for that spin house was not appropriate to the location. What I, and then later on in that paragraph, what I did say was that there was no hardship for it shown for paying full amount of taxes and since this is the second house that SPIN has in the township, that they knew uh, going into it, that there was, that we have a notorious uh, level of taxes, uh, and yet they chose to uh, purchase in this township in spite of that. Number three, I did not say that we needed to appeal to the, the zoning hearing board decision what I asked was that the board send council to oppose tax exemption before the county board of assessments, not the zoning hearing board. And number four, I um, also raised the issue that there was an equivalence made to the uh, zoning hearing board decision on sunrise and the uh, pilot uh, on that project, and they are not equivalent. Uh, so sunrise is actually paying both school and township taxes, uh, and that is not the case with spin. So those were important in terms of factual corrections. I'd appreciate that correction, those corrections going into the minutes. Thank you. Okay. And uh, Allison, if you could make sure that that occurs, it would be helpful. Okay. I'll take her silence as complete agreement. 
All right, are there, there you are. Uh, are there any other questions, additions, or corrections as things stood at this point? Then I will make a motion to accept the corrected minutes and approve them for the Building and Zoning Committee meeting of May 4th. All those in favor of accepting the corrected minutes of the Building and Zoning Committee meeting say aye. 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 See, and even with that, Mitch, we took less time. <laughs> I tried. No, 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 that's okay. It wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't matter how long you talk, we're going to be shorter with it. <laughs> <laughs> or if I think Commissioner Brockington, Public Safety Committee met on May 11th. Tell us about Yes, that. Mr. President, we did meet on May 11th and we have three items to discuss tonight. The first is an adoption of an ordinance amending Chapter 285 Vehicle and Traffic Section 285-43 Street and Parking Regulations of the Sheltonham Township Code to amend the traffic regulation to delete the no parking on Eastern Road, east side of Sheltonham Avenue, 1500 feet north, and add no parking anytime on Eastern Road, east side of Sheltonham Avenue to south to the um, to the on ramp of 309. Um, and that is attached. And that's basically, uh, we've been getting large commercial vehicles parking along that corridor. And we're trying to keep that from happening. I, I, it's truly a safety issue. So there would be an adoption of an ordinance and, and um, our township manager. Thank you, commissioner. This would be ordinance 2441-22. And we just need a motion on this and then I will call the roll. So moved. So moved. We have a motion that was that was moved. Yeah, I just said so moved. All those in favor? No. Um, uh, I gotta call to roll. It's a roll. Call just call say, roll. Call the roll. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Commissioner Brockington. Aye. Commissioner Holland. Aye. Commissioner Norris. Aye. Commissioner Pransky. Aye. Commissioner Rappaport. Aye. Commissioner Arman. Aye. Commissioner Zygmuntfeld. Aye. Mr. Chairman, the ordinance is approved by seven yeas and zero nays. Thank you. We're going to move on to item 11B, authorize, uh, authorization to advertise, to advertise the Board of Commissioners intent to consider the possi possible vote to adopt an ordinance amending chapter 285 vehicle and traffic section 285-43, the street and parking regulation of Sheltonham Township Code to amend the traffic regulation to add a handicap parking in front of 471 Valley Road in Mel Melrose Park, PA. Any questions about that at all? Uh, Irv, I have an odd general question. Yeah. Um, I have no problem with this, by the way, and I, Jared, okay. and I mostly never do, but we're probably all aware of the proliferation of handicap plates for people who go jogging. Um, and we wonder why, and they know that because the doctor said they'll give them the thing and they got a plate. Do we have any way of verifying when we're putting up uh, a parking space uh, that this is an active handicap situation or do, we, or do we rely on the fact that the state has issued something and therefore we do? I'm gonna ask the chief on that particular question and whether, whether we verify that the person is what actually handicapped is yeah. that what you're asking, Brad? Basically, something, yeah. That's correct, Commissioner. We have a, a application process that we verify. So we probably verify it with their doctors, I assume? That the person has a handicap and that they have a handicap placard as well and requesting assistance in front of the residents. Okay. Yeah, so I, and Brad, it might be some HIPAA things. I don't know how far we can go into verification. Yeah, but basically, if they have a plate, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So calling for the uh, approval of item 11B. Uh, all those in favor of authorizing that this be advertised, say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. We're going to move on to item 11C. Authorize the purchase order for, for strikers in the amount of $21,899 to install a power loader auto lifter to all uh, of the new ambulance. And I know this will be something that our EMS department has been asking for 
Um, are there any questions in reference to this? Or do we need any explanation from Ken in reference to this item? No? All right, so I'm calling for the approval of item 11C. All those in favor of authorizing the purchase of uh, this $22,000 auto lifter, say aye. 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 Mr. President, that's all we have tonight that we need to vote on. I call for the approval of all of the minutes from public safety from our meeting that was just held on May 11th, 2022. Uh, I Mr. think Mr. President, Mr. President, Oh, I'm sorry, question. Ann. I didn't see you. I was reading. Well, and I, I think Commissioner Pransky also was saying something. No, no, no. no. I was oh, just okay. paying attention to that. Yeah. I saw the finger. I'm Thank sorry. You. Thank I'm you. I'm sorry, Commissioner. I wasn't going to let you finish without, without parking. That's okay. Um, thank you. I again, I, I apologize, but I do need to make a correction. Um, and it had to do with that striker discussion. I did not ask if we were locked in. The materials were very clear that we were locked in. What I had asked was the ba the background on how did we get locked in to striker. Um, Mr. Hellendahl explained that to my satisfaction and the rest is history. So, but I would like that corrected because I wasn't asking if we were, that was very clear. I'm Thank asking you. that we make those corrections um, in the minutes for our meeting that was held May 11th. Thank you. Okay, but um, all in favor of approving those minutes with those corrections? Aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. President. I am done with public safety for tonight. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Brockington. Uh, Commissioner Rappaport, public affairs met on May 11th, and you have uh, a bunch of resolutions we're going to discuss. Yeah, it was a busy night. Thank you very much. Uh, item one uh, the, the committee recommended was the approval of a reimbursable not to exceed $5,000 payment to the friends of Curtis Arboretum for a pond study to be paid for out of the stormwater fee conditioned upon the provision of a quote for the pond study from the consultant before the board of commissioners meeting. I think we got that. Um, so on behalf of the committee, I'll so move. Um, uh, Madam Chair, woman. Question. <laughs> I'm just holding up your end of it by having at least one finger up for question. Um, for those who might not have been at that meeting or who need further explanation, can you explain exactly the purpose of the pond study? I mean, we know the pond is there. What are we studying? There are a couple ponds there and their health is not good. Um, the experts have told us that, um, yeah, that there, you know, this is a water quality issue. It's a safety issue. The, uh, this, the health of the ponds, the viability of the ponds needs to be studied. And we have enough experts in the Friends uh, group uh, that they will be happy to help um, uh, with the manpower to do some of that, which will keep the price of the study done uh, low. So. Because of course, the, the pond staying healthy affects all the environment around it, which keeps the rest of it healthy. So, and, and our, our yes, thank you. And our MS4 requirements in terms of water uh, purity, as as the water then continues uh, through the system. Uh, so, I don't know. Staff probably can do a better job than we did um, explaining this if they want to. I think we covered it. Okay. So, Mr. Mr. President, I think we are ready for our, our vote. Okay. All those in favor of approving uh, this expenditure of funds, say aye. 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 Uh, item 12B, the adoption of a resolution authorizing the submission of a grant under the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development's Greenways, Trails, and Recreation Program in the amount of $250,000 to improve pedestrian and vehicular access and safety at Curtis Arboretum. And on behalf of the committee, I so move. Question, Madam Chairperson. Sure. I'm just wondering if there's any requirement for matching 
in this or any of the other grants, Allison? Are these all um, completely uh, self-sufficient and self-funding? Uh, no, there's a requirement uh, for matches. Uh, I believe they're all about 15% or so. Uh, unfortunately, I think we're going to um, exceed that, but we are matching with some other grants. For example, this one, uh, we have applied for a $100,000 grant. Oh no, this one we did not apply for a match yet, but we may have some other opportunities uh, down the road that we might be able to take advantage of next year. And I, I also uh, wanted to mention that uh, many of these sound familiar, sounded familiar actually this month because um, uh, Ms. Elliott has already uh, submitted applications for other grants that would supplement many of these uh, and that would help us provide those matches. So this isn't the only one, there are quite a few. And uh, she, we may have been busy as the committee, but she's been a lot busier uh, working on these grants. Yeah, correct. Um, the, the item C and D both have other uh, grants that we've submitted this year to, to match those to reduce the township's contribution. And uh, I believe item E is 100% uh, covered for without a township match. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, I think we're ready to call that. Oh, ready. All those in favor of adopting the resolution uh, for the submission of a grant for $250,000 to improve pedestrian and vehicular access at Curtis Arboretum, say aye. 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 Okay, uh, 12C, the committee uh, moves adoption of a resolution authorizing the submission of a grant under the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development's Watershed Restoration and Protection Program in the amount of $300,000 for design and construction of the Robinson Park Wetland Enhancement Project. Again, I so move. Questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Item D, adoption of a resolution authorizing the submission of a grant under the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development's Flood Mitigation Program in the amount of $500,000 for the acquisition of property and demolitions of structures for the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection's Glenside Flood Control Project, and I so move. Question, Madam Chairperson. Sure, go ahead. Allison, don't we have other grants uh, also submitted for, for um, the Glenside Flood Control Project that, that may be not specific to the acquisition of property, but very much tied into that entire initiative? Uh, we do. We have submitted two other applications this year. Um, all tied to acquisition and demolition. Uh, each grant is slightly different, so and we have slightly different chances of receiving the grant. So we're we're trying to hedge our bets and get as much of this uh, paid for by other sources. Thank you. There's a motion on the table. Okay. No other comments or questions. All those in favor of adopting this resolution for the Glenside Flood Control Project. Say aye. 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 Item 12E, adoption of a resolution authorizing the submission of a grant under the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development's Keystone Communities Program in the amount of $50,000 for the purchase and installation of 10 signs to install at nine township parks. And again, on behalf of the committee's decision, I so move. Another question, Madam Chairperson. Remember, I wasn't at that meeting. I was oh. far away. All right. No, I didn't have a chance to extend your normal meeting. Okay. <laughs> um, the question here is, uh, is this money, money that was um, uh, purported to be provided by either our state senator or state representative um, as part of the DCED uh, Keystone program so that it's pretty much been given the, um, been given the advocacy by a couple of our elected officials. And that may be a question that you can answer or potentially Mr. Pransky might be able to answer that. You are correct. 
Okay. Uh, do we know which of our elected representatives is responsible for that authorization? Uh, good question. I'm not sure if Bob would have an answer to that. I believe it's Senator Haywood's office. Okay. Thank you again. Thank you to Senator Haywood. So that motion is still on the table. That's still on the table. All those in favor <laughs> of adopting the resolution for the purchase of signs for our township parks, say aye. 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 Um, and F, uh, the committee uh, recommended authorizing the extension of remote meetings for all township committees and the board of commissioners until September. And I so move. No and this questions is, here. Yeah. This continues no? to be a moving target. <laughs> in in Madam, the interest Madam, of safety for us. There is one. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Madam Chair. Well, Dan was getting ready to, to go into it. Can we just explain to the public who maybe didn't, wasn't on the first meeting as why we're doing that? Yeah, I was just, uh, you can yeah, add Dan on. Was gonna, I, yeah, I was Dan just was going to say, in, in the interest of safety for our township staff, for our township residents, and also for our township commissioners. Uh, we are continuing to uh, get advice uh, and counsel on what are the uh, safest way for us to have meetings. And uh, we're certainly interested in gathering and seeing our residents face to face, uh, but we don't wanna do it if it's not a safe uh, condition. Uh, so that's why we continue to push this back. We hope at some time, some point we will be back at Curtis for public meetings. Um, but even then, as I've been saying, we already have the technology, we've gotten some additional equipment so that when we are back in person, there will still be a hybrid opportunity. There will still be an, a Zoom opportunity for people to attend the meetings. So everyone should be aware of that. That's all my comments. Any okay. Uh, okay, so there's, an, to, there's a motion to authorize the extension uh, of uh, the remote meetings until September. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so now unless there are comments or corrections to the minutes, uh, I'll move acceptance of the public affairs minutes for May 11th. No changes. All those in favor of accepting the Public Affairs Committee meeting minutes say aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner Rappaport. Uh, number 13, the uh, Pension Board. Uh, I happen to chair that. The Pension Board met on uh, May 6th for its regular meeting, and there are no specific items to discuss. I'm uh, happy to report that uh, uh, we met uh, before the uh, stock market of today took place. <laughs> we, we were looking at some nice numbers then. Um, so having stated that, um, all those in favor of uh, accepting the regular meeting minutes dated May 6th, 2022, say aye. 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 Uh, this is for the Board of Commissioners meeting, old business. Anyone have old business? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, you are two spots here. <laughs> today we received the long awaited um, PennDOT report and PowerPoint presentation on the status of the roads. Um, I'm in just looking it over uh, to make sure we've got the information. It will be posted tomorrow morning to the website. We will also send it out to members who have been uh, actively involved with the traffic situations around the township and the commissioners will get a copy as well um, in advance of that posting so that it can be reviewed and then we will also be putting out information as to a date in June in which we can have a uh, public discussion about the report invite PennDOT and allow residents the opportunity as well as staff and the commissioners to ask questions to PennDOT uh, on their report. That's good news. And we'll certainly look forward to the opportunity to have a, a discussion with Pendle. Any, oh, any other old business? Okay, moving along. 
Uh, next item is new business. Before I ask if anyone has any additional new business items, there are three new business items on our agenda. And the first is a status update on the Lamont Community Center boiler. Mr. Chairman, yes, Mr. Chairman. there has been no change in the status of it. The, the boiler is shocked and uh, we have received an estimate uh, in, that exceeds $1 million. So um, that will be an item on uh, for further discussion in our upcoming facility meetings. Anybody have any comments or questions there? Um, I have a question. My name is Martha Woods. I live in Lamont and I go to that community center. I wonder why is that boiler so expensive? Because people have gone online and find boilers that are much cheaper. From fifteen thousand dollars on up. So why is this boiler so expensive? The boiler uh, for that, based on how it currently sits, uh, it is a expensive piece of equipment, um, as well as including all the piping that goes throughout the building. It is a hot water boiler um, that circulates throughout the building. Um, that building, it, that boiler is actually shot um, to go with any type of gas powered furnaces or that. Uh, it would include ductworks throughout the entire building as well. So that is the current estimate that uh, we have for that boiler. Mean that. Anybody, other, any other questions or comments? Otherwise, I'm um, moving on to uh, Commissioner Rappaport. Did you? It looks like you have a question. Well, I'll just I'll just throw it out um, for um, you know when we're ready to discuss that estimate. Hopefully, uh, we'll also have other alternative estimates for things like um, uh, mini splits to go in various sections in order to. Um, in order to at least have some functioning spaces. So, so a couple, uh, maybe mini splits for the, um, the large uh, assembly room, uh, and maybe one is all you need for the library, uh, just to get them functioning, uh, you know, one for the staff area that by that time, that'll cover the two bathrooms that are up there. If you feel that, uh, um, this building can be um, made useful uh, just in terms of until we can get a, a more uh, long-term solution uh, to the facility problem. So thank you, Ann. I'll, I'll follow up on that, uh, uh, Bob. I don't, I don't want to uh, either put you on the spot or, or make this into a, a full facilities uh, meeting. Uh, we had one of those this week and we'll be scheduling another one. But um, with the warmer weather, is the Lamont, are, are there plans or are we discussing uh, the option of opening up the Lamont Community Center uh, during the summer weather? At this time, no, due to issues of water infiltration into the building, there is quite a bit of mold that is in the building. So there are many issues uh, to that facility besides just a boiler. Um, so uh, there, there's a lot in that building. I know we, were, we covered some of that in a recent facilities meeting, but it's not just one item there. There are multiple items that would need to be addressed to be able to open up that facility. I believe the library section is uh, going to be opened. That's a uh, pretty much area that is sectioned off. Um, I know we put some uh, money in to get the uh, bathrooms and the plumbing in that area taken care of. Uh, there's some electrical issues that we're taking care of as well. So that portion of the building will be able to open the, uh, and that is contingent upon the library uh, to when they are looking to open that up. So one more follow-up question there, and that is uh, when we're considering what the options are for the building, um, is, is the building a historical uh, designated building? Is that an issue? Uh, I know Allison had looked that up. Allison, if you could chime in on that. 
for um, as far as I know, it's not listed on the National Register, but it is uh, part of the Lamont Historic District. OK, thank Mr. you, Mr. President, if I may make a comment. Uh, yes, absolutely. Commissioner. Arman. Thank you. Um, and, and just to put some things in context, because I know there are some people here who participated in the most recent and perhaps previous facilities conversations um, and some who have not. Um, the, the, the township and the board of commissioners is committed to looking um, not only at the Lamont um, community center and library, uh, which is extremely important, but all of our facilities and these conversations are going on as we speak, uh, both among staff uh, within the community, and, and we hope that, that that conversation continues with the community and to, to get feedback as we did the other day, earlier this week. Um, so th this is uh, uh, an important aspect, but one aspect of a much larger conversation uh, regarding our township facilities um, everywhere, um, public works, administration, police, uh, and, and others. So. Um, and it is an important piece of that conversation. Uh, so for those of you who um, weren't able, and I, I, like I said, I do recognize some uh, names and faces from earlier meetings, it's important to know that this is not the first time we're talking about this. It won't be the last time, and it is part of a larger conversation. So I just want to make sure that uh, any newcomers are aware of that. Yeah, Commissioner Armin, thank you for putting that into context. Well, because I, I was... Uh, just asking about this one building and, and it is very important as you just noted uh, to keep it in context of the full facilities discussion going on in the township. Thank you. There's two hands raised. Uh, oh, Mr. two Brown. hands, yes. Um, uh, okay, I'm going from left to right. Uh, Mr. Graham. Um, excuse me, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Eddie Graham. And I am the president of the NAA, uh, the Sheltonham area branch, NAACP, uh, whose uh, we have been meeting in the Lamont Community Center for many years. Um, I, I just have three questions, but also a comment. Uh, the Lamont Community Center is in a very important building within the African American community. And it goes back years uh, to the Civil War, where the Lamont uh, where the Lamont community uh, were able to train uh, uh, civil uh, these uh, soldiers during the Civil War uh, in that particular area. That building was a institution in uh, making sure that we had remembrance of not all of those soldiers that gave their lives. But not only that, it is such an important um, community center to the African American community through the library through other opportunities that are offered to our youth in this area. So I really hope that this board would consider making sure that that boiler system is um, replaced. Uh, so getting to my first question, what is the net worth of the Lamont Community Center as it stands now? If it was put up for sale, you mean? Correct. Okay, that's what I thought you. I don't think we have a current appraisal or information app on that. It's a good question. Okay. Secondly, where did the estimate for one million dollars to replace the boiler system? What company did that come from? Mr. Township Manager, our maintenance uh, superintendent of facilities received that quote. Um, so that was an estimate from a company that's done some boiler work for the township. But it's not just the boiler itself that's looking at because you have the entire system um, in which the steam goes throughout the entire building. And I don't think we want to make the same mistake that was done at Roland Community Center when a new boiler was put in. And because piping and a lot of the associated equipment was not replaced, that boiler was refiring a thousand times a day. Yes, a thousand times a day. So it is not up for uh, the general public to know where the estimate came from? Oh, we'll post that to the website. There's absolutely no problem with that. 
by we'll two post sure estimate and post it to the website. The reason why I asked those two questions, I, I, um, I find it difficult to believe that the replacement of the boiler system could be more worth more than the actual property value of the building itself. Um, those are my concerns in, in raising those issues. And lastly, um, exactly uh, did the Sheltonham uh, Board of Commissioners take advantage of ARPA funding that was offered through the township, uh, the township, I'm sorry, the Montgomery County had offered over $160 million. Part of the, uh, I did some research into that. That boiler system would have been covered if an application was made for ARPA funding. Uh, did any of the commissioners or did this board and its staff file for any ARPA fundings to make the repairs to the building? Uh, yes. The township has submitted millions of dollars for improvements and actually was posted to the county website as to the actual numbers uh, that were submitted for this. So the Board of Commissioners and staff have been active looking at ways to fund this, um, but also to the boiler. You, you was, we lost your audio, Bob. Bob, you, you Bob, we lost mute. your audio. Bob, you on mute. Bob. Bob, we lost your audio. Still not there. It looks like we lost the uh, sound stage camera. There we go. Okay. Um, I'm not sure where, where I left off at, but it is not a singular issue that it's made to sound so easy that well, we just fixed the boiler. But um, if you go to the website and look, at, we've been very transparent with all the photos of the facilities that show the condition that it's in. Um, being here only 20 months, I can't speak to what was happening over the last 25 years. And that's where this started. This is not something that just happened overnight. Um, so there are issues of mold that are in that building. Um, there are a multitude of safety issues. So if it was just a matter of a million dollars uh, to fix the boiler, I think we'd already be in the process of doing that. So the township has significant, uh, submitted for significant dollars, I believe, uh, to the, on the federal level, in the state level, uh, at least $50 million for facilities. Um, so we are looking at all the dollars that are available to the township uh, to be able to address a lot of these issues. But as Commissioner Arbin mentioned, it is not just one facility. We have all facilities in the township have big issues um, between the EMS building basically was condemned and somehow magically was reopened. You have issues at the township building where the building was closed because of air quality issues. Uh, and also there are structural issues there. So it is a big picture to be looked at here. Uh, Lamont is a priority. Um, so uh, I hope everyone understands that it is not being looked at any differently than any other facility and knowing the history and how important this is to the community. It's important to all of us. Mr. President, if oh. I can just jump in sure, uh, to, to Mr. Graham's yeah. question. This is Commissioner Zygmunt felt. Uh, Mr. Graham, um, just for the community centers, the RACB grants that are in excess of between one and a half and two and a half million dollars that go far beyond the replacement of the boilers. Um, this, this township uh, probably has uh, close to $115 million of federal, state, and county grants submitted. Um, since you made the point, we were dramatically underfunded uh, when the CARES Act uh, money was released. Cheltenham received uh, a total of $3.8 million. So it, obviously in two uh, distributions, we are, you know, we are seeking some fair compensation, particularly from those entities that still have funds. And you're, you're correct. There is 161 plus million dollars that the county has said is available. There are also, I believe somewhere around 4,000 applications of funds, funding requests. So we understand that there is an opportunity to tap into those funds. We've done extensive work to try and get those funds. And in fact, if Springfield would like to provide, and if you and your role, both as a Springfield commissioner, and also NAACP chair would like to provide an additional letter of advocacy, we greatly appreciate it. If that would help 
convinced either the county or the federal folks or the state and governor to put some significant funds so we could do what we have uh, wanted to do for quite a period of time. We greatly appreciate it. Okay, well, we wish that we had have known that um, before the deadline of the applications were submitted because we would have gladly sent a letter of support. And also uh, to the uh, prior comment, I can't remember to where, it ca uh, where it came from. We look forward to reviewing uh, where the estimate came for the remediation of the mold and also for the replacement of the entire boiler and duct system because through an engineering staff that I had through a fraternity brother of mine who uh, did a, the layout uh, from, from, uh, from some of the schematics that were supplied to us by the librarian uh, at the building to remediate mold and to put in a new boiler and duct system would be less than $50,000. So we are really we are really looking forward oh, to seeing your estimate so that we can compare it to our engineering staff and hopefully we can come to some sort of consensus so that this building can be preserved because it is a historical building. It has great impact in the African-American community in Sheltonham. And we would just like to be able to do whatever we can uh, in helping to preserve uh, this historical landmark. And once again, thank you to your board for allowing me to speak. Take care. Mr. Norris. Commissioner Norris. Yes, Commissioner Pansky. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Graham. A couple quick comments. Uh, Mr. Graham, thank you so much for attending and giving us that information. I will tell you this, and I think I will speak for the whole board here. If your engineer is correct on a number of $50,000, we'll take two. I'll just take one. I'll just take one of your estimates to compare the two. No, I'm just saying if he's right about fifty thousand dollars, we'll take two. Because we I can would gladly I would love, roll it. That's I what would I said. gladly roll love it. to see how it comes to a million dollars. I I will take I, one I don't of disagree with you there. I would love to review it in its I, I don't I don't disagree with you there. I understand that, but I'm saying if he's right at fifty thousand dollars, we'll write us down for two. Well, I tell you what, we'll just give you the okay. one and you can put a ten percent uh 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 10% gratuity on top of it. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Brown, a property maintenance supervisor uh, for Shellingham Township. Uh, I just wanted to address the comments from the gentleman. Um, as far as the uh, proposal that we received from the boiler company that came in, uh, that is for not only replacing the boiler, that's for replacing the electrical system um, that runs the boiler, all of the pumps, uh, that's for all of the pumps. All of the piping throughout the building is leaking. Uh, there's multiple leaks. You can't find where it's leaking. Um, we've tried several times. Uh, the entire boiler is shot itself. So it's not just as simple as replacing the boiler. If it was just replacing the boiler, it would have it would have been like everyone is saying it would have been done. Um, it's the entire system itself, the electrical, the pumps, um, everything needs to be replaced. The entire boiler room itself is falling apart. I uh, just took a tour with a couple of uh, young ladies last week through the boiler room so that they can see for themselves um, the condition. And it's actually what we're saying it is. If it wasn't, uh, and, and also if you're, wel if you're welcome to you, uh, I'll be more than welcome to give you the tour as well of the Lamont Community Center uh, so you can see exactly um, the conditions of it. I would love to take you up on that offer. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll have our, our, our branch secretary reach out to you to set that up. I would love to do that. Thank you very much for your accommodation. No, and I think that's part of the issue here about being open and transparent, um, because if it was $50,000, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. Um, so, and I'm not sure if your person actually got in the building. I'm going to guess that they didn't. So I think getting factual information out to the community and having your people look at it. Again, we have, there's no sleight of hand here, hiding anything. We're open and accessible and Alan will make sure he takes you through uh, any facility you'd like. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Crane. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Mr. Taylor, I believe you're next. Yes, good evening. And also thank you for the opportunity to speak. And I have to free yield to uh, Ed Graham. 
he basically recapped on a lot of things I was going to inquire about. Uh, but for me at this point in time, we talked a lot about applying for grants and that could be very competitive. So just suppose we don't get the grant then what happens then or any type of grant to address the conditions of this center. And if we do, and this might be hypothetical, what would be a projected time frame that we would be looking at in terms of turning the situation around? That's a, a good question. Um, I don't think we can wait very long with this. Um, they are currently under consideration at the state and county level um, for these funds. So anything that can be done to lobby anybody at the state level would be very helpful. Uh, we're going to move on this on a fast track because uh, we should have hopefully proposals in front of the board to uh, Commissioner Zygmuntfeld's committee in June uh, for his meeting, a recommendation for someone who will be able to look at the facilities, assess them, and then come up with proposals about renovation of each building in, in some uh, rough cost estimates. If we don't hear anything back on those, um, then it becomes a part of consideration in the fall of um, how, how do we go about and fund this? Once the board makes a decision that you know, the estimates look as though it's probably beneficial for us to renovate, restore, uh, or look at rebuilding the structure uh, or doing whatever to that, um, I would hope that sometime this fall we would be able to have that type of discussion. Um, this has gone on for too long and I don't think we can wait much longer. Mr. Chairman, I think it's important that we stress that point about getting in touch with elected representatives. A lot of these grants that the township, uh, with the help of Mr. Zygmuntfeld, have applied for are sitting in front of the governor. Uh, the RACB grants, he is the final decider on these things. And we have two good elected representatives, and it's important that you contact them and say, talk to the governor about getting these approved. Because if that money starts flowing, it allows us to fix these things even quicker. To put something Commissioner Zygmuntfeld said in context, yes, Cheltenham received $3.8 million in CARES money. That's paltry compared to the fact that Abington, I believe, received 19 and a fraction million. Uh, Lower Marion received 20 plus million. Their decision point was population, not the fact that we're an entering suburb, not that we're the most densely packed community. They said we're under 50,000 not uh, 50,000 in population, therefore we're a non-entitled community. That is a strange benchmark, but that is how it was decided. So we only got 3.8. We could have certainly used 20. The point is the rest of this money now sits with the county and with the governor. And it's now time to press our representatives to put the pressure on them to release funds to us. And thank you, Commissioner Pensky. I have one more question and then I'll leave this alone, if you don't mind. No, go ahead, Mr. You had indicated that in this process that you would in fact be transparent and you would be transparent to the community at large. Will this be the only means of the communication to the community at large through this form being the commissioner's meetings? Uh, we are going to be having separate facilities meetings uh, with the community. Uh, to discuss anything and all that takes place on this. So the process that we are anticipating is when these firms come in front of the board, that the public would be invited to hear the interviews from the board on the selection process, and then also be part of the conversation of what the wants, needs, and goals are uh, of this, uh, either it's restorations or replacement would be part of that. And then everything would be recorded meeting. So if someone can't make it, you could click on a link on the website and see the meeting that would be recorded. Um, and then any other communications or documents we would post there too as well. Okay. Mr. President. I guess Commissioner Armand. Yeah, Mr. Taylor, that, that, that's a great question. And, and, and transparency and communication is an important uh, aspect of this process. And, and uh, re referring to the comment that I made earlier, there was um, a facilities meeting uh, where there was a lot of discussion about the Lamont Community Center this past Monday, 
which is available on our website, the entire video. And for anyone who hasn't seen it, um, it is a good opportunity to, to um, explore some of the comments, some of the uh, suggestions that were that were made uh, by members of our public uh, regarding that particular facility and others. Okay, I appreciate your comment and I'll yield to the next hand that's been raised. Thank you, sir. And just just to just to add to that comment, that specific link is under hot topics, and then there's a facilities management tab where you can find that information. Thank you, Commissioner Holland. Uh, Ms. My Ms. Myris. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Um, I've spoken on this before. I have one of those people who've been around, and and I'm gonna keep speaking on this, um, you know, because I feel like this is the same story. I just keep hearing the same story months later, years later, right? Monday, it's the same slides, right? Like it's the same as last September. It's the same as when we started talking about facilities. Um, and I can appreciate that you, you know, you guys inherited a difficult situation from your predecessors. I've also heard that story over and over again, you know, and I know that from a financial perspective, right, that it makes good financial sense to X, Y, Z, and I know where you guys are going with this, but it also makes good financial sense to pay somebody $7.25 an hour. You know, we need to take into account other things other than strictly finances, right, that there are thousands of residents without their libraries and community centers right now, thousands of residents who've been waiting for an answer, who were told that it was going to open in April, do you know what I mean, who've been told the same thing, and you know you can say whether it's on a historic registry or not, but we know it's historic to us. You know, and we can talk about. Forgive me if I don't really want to hear about all of the facilities when this is the one that we don't have access to. You know that this one is what's important, and it's we're in crisis right now. This is a crisis to be losing two libraries and two community centers. Um, and yeah, it's been neglected for years. This has been a problem for years. And I think what I'm starting to get scared of because I'm hearing the same story again and again and again is that, you know, years from now, because I like to believe I'm still young, um, I'll be still here at commissioners meetings and I'll still be hearing stories about how a difficult situation was inherited by the predecessors, except that like you guys will be the predecessors who have continuously kicked the can. And I feel like it's really just important that we provide our residents with their libraries and community centers. Right, and I can appreciate that there are different options and that money doesn't grow on trees and I can get all these things, but I mean, it doesn't stop that, right? That we are in crisis and that crisis really needs to start getting solved. We need to be moving on this in whatever kind of direction it is. I personally think this, you know, is living, breathing, standing black history, right? And if the million dollars covers the boiler and the electrical system, you know, and like whatever we need to do in order to do this, um, but it needs to get done. You know, I'd like to hear a different story next time we have a facilities meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, go ahead. I, I appreciate Liza's comments, but let me just say in the 20 months I've been here, I don't think this conversation has ever been had prior to that about the condition of these facilities of all of them and to address these immediately, which we have brought forward. The other issue is too, it, it, I, I know it sounds like, well, you know, you've heard this at all, but when the township's looking at millions of dollars, not just tens of thousands, there has to be a process and a decision-making um, plan of how we're going to do this. I don't think there's anyone here that, that doesn't know or realize the value of that to the Lamont community. It's absolutely, and the history and the continued history I continue to hear is just absolutely incredible. Um, I'm big on, my history has been, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it right the first time. We're going to fix it. We're going to solve it. And then for the long term, we can just take care of it and maintain it. But sometimes when I see band-aids that have been put on things to, well, let's just pacify or satisfy. Let's do this. And let's not do this. Is we need to fix it right the first time so we don't keep coming back. Things continue to get more and more expensive. So it's a process. Um, Again, government works very slowly, not like the private sector. There are regulations and red tape that involve how we go about and make these types of repairs. 
but there is a commitment here that we are not gonna drag this out. We are not gonna continue to be talking about this two years from now, five years from now, because if we're still sitting here two years from now, we haven't done anything, the board should fire me and they should get rid of me because guess what? We can't continue to keep sitting here and waiting without making decisions and letting the community know we do care and we're gonna make things the right way for the long term. So I apologize if I come across a little more passionate, but I'm passionate about the community and passionate about doing things the right way and spending good money after good money and making sure that at the end of the day, everybody is proud of what we've done. And we definitely maintain and keep that history here alive for generations to come to learn from. Thank you, Mr. Township Manager. We, we appreciate those comments and your commitment. Uh, Ms. Brown, you have a comment? Yeah, uh, Very good evening, everyone. Uh, once I was informed about the dire straits of the Lamont Community Center, um, a lot of us were going around with petitions, um, making it known, and Dan Norris knows that because I've had conversations with him about it. And I also looked at some research, and back in uh, September of 2021, it was a company by the name of the Industrial Boiler and Chimney Company, and I believe they were some of the people that came and looked over the Lamont Center, correct me if I'm wrong. And it was not only the boiler, it was the walls eroding, uneven floors, electrical lighting, just like it was discussed earlier. So um, it's my hope that something is gonna be done because the whole community is up in arms about this. And I told them that at the facilities meeting because half of our residents didn't even know that the Lamont Center was closed. We got no notification. You know, everybody is in tech savvy, so they're not able to get on the computers and find out what's open and what's closed. So we already discussed that about the communication piece. So I'm hoping that moving forward uh, at the uh, facilities meeting, um, they'll have some better ideas at the next meeting. Thank you for your input. Uh -huh. uh, Darlene Melton. Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to try to say this as calmly and as respectfully as I can. Mr. Graham, I heard you say that you had your frat brother or you discussed our situation with your frat brother. And your frat brother came up with a, a number. What I'm going to say is that if your frat brother, I see your attorney, so there's the barristers. There's other organizations that could come to our aid. The meetings we had before, the township not only is being transparent in this situation is because they allowed Miss Jerry and myself to go into that room to see, to see for ourselves, because sometimes you do have to see it instead of hearing it. I'm a long time resident and so is Miss Brown and so is Miss Woods and other people on this call. We've been in and out of that building. We know the significance we know that before it was the community center, it was a school to educate our children. I'm kind of upset because it seems that you may be a part of Sheltonham NAACP, but if I heard another comment, you were also in another township, which means that if you're coming, you should give that support too. But again, as respectfully as I can, since the township is open to other sources to get money, there are other sources. And maybe you being an attorney will know how we could go about getting a nonprofit, how to get the barristers, the, the other frat brothers, the sororities. One person told me of a celebrity that gives millions for just libraries. 
And that's all today that I'm even going to comment about this because again, we cannot blame what happened. It happened. And right. as disgraceful as it is, we need to fix it. And guess what? We're going to fix it because we're going to band together and we're going to fix it. Thank, for thank you for your You're yeah, welcome, thank, uh, Dan. Thanks for your input. Uh, Bill England, do you have a comment? You're on mute, Bill. Okay. Thank you. Still trying to perfect it. I attended the facilities committee meeting on Monday and um, I saw the presentation and I believed I thanked the staff for putting that together. And I went and looked at the website to see the history of the facilities committee. And um, I'm a little bit concerned about what I heard this evening in that this seems to be where the discussion is going to be held about Lamont and other facilities. And the question, well, the concern about that is that that committee met in September and then it met again in May and there was nothing in between. Um, I did ask a couple people in the township on the board about the opening of reopening of both Lamont and the Roland Community Center. And um, I got my, I didn't get a, a clear answer until I came to the facilities committee meeting and I asked uh, Mr. Zinkowski, um, who was very straightforward in his answer that they are not going to be reopening. So my concern is that we have a lot of our assets are closed. Um, I went through this the other night. I know what it's like when you're on the board and you have to try to manage the sins of the past and deal with the money that you have in the present. Um, but I'm concerned if that's the body uh, where this discussion is going to continue. Is it going to meet in eight months or is it going to be something more regular? I don't ask that to be a wise guy. Um, that was a long period of time. And um, I am very concerned, as I said, about not only the two community centers, but all the programming that no longer takes place in those parts of our township. Because when I asked the township manager, what would happen to the programming that would be there? Uh, there hasn't been any programming. Now, it's understandable that under uh, COVID, things were cut back or stopped, but there, weren't, there aren't even any plans to try to do anything. We hear a lot of talk about the mental health needs of our youth. We know that our youth need alternatives to their phones, and I do see it as part of something that drew us to Cheltenham, where the recreation, the libraries, the schools, um, a lot of things. And, and I'm concerned that we're losing some of that right now. Thank you. Thanks for your input. Uh, not seeing any other questions or raised hands, I'm going to move on to uh, 15B under new business. And that is the status update on the Township Human Relations Commission. Mr. Township Manager, are you going to be addressing that? Or? Um, I, I don't believe so. I believe that's probably a board item. If nobody's going to take it on in terms of initiating a conversation, I would like to start, if you don't mind. Okay, go go ahead, Mr. Taylor. Because even not being negative with the initial like response, this is kind of where we're at with this. And we just dealt with a broken boiler system. We also have a broken human relations commission. And then talking to people in the community about this, they have a concern too about the response of the township in terms of their response to discrimination or possibilities of discrimination. We talk in terms of pain, complexity, and also the process or lack of proactivity 
and the advantageous points that could be made in terms of addressing the needs of the community. And the feeling is that uh, townships have an obligation to provide for and enrich the lives of their residents. And people want to be treated equally wherever they go and confident that they will be not unfairly judged based on disability, gender, race, or any other factor beyond their control. And by recreating a human rights commission that applies to local solutions can more so address local issues as opposed to spinning it off to somebody else. And I mean, the title's not nearly as important as the purpose and the scope of the commission, which is to give residents a forum to address civil rights violations that may occur in the community. And there may be other options, but it's advantageous for the telecies and townships to handle their events locally, where the impact is the most strongest. Human rights typically are composed of people in the community in the form of an odd number. And I know you're aware of that as commissions primarily concern themselves with unlawful discrimination and members should reflect the community diversity population and possess a wide range of experience in handling such community advocacy, housing, employment laws. A good commission will strive not only to combat unlawful discrimination, but also to prevent it. This type of civic engagement increases the commission's visibility and helps understand that they have a local resource to reply to their needs. It's most important that we have a process in place to resolve complaints within the community and a clear process. The goal of the complaint process should be that of resolution and also mediation. Addressing unlawful discrimination locally can be a source of pride and is still a strong sense of responsibility for the community. And Human Relations Commission can also help the township connect with the residents, become more aware of the issues and concerns that face some of the underserved segments of our township. Now, when I talked about pain, perplexity, and process, you may not be impacted as a board of commissioners, but if you go into another chair, there are issues and concerns that people have within the community. And for a commission, it goes beyond just looking at that commission addressing discrimination, the possibility of discrimination in the community, when they can be proactive and advantageous to educating people and preventing things from occurring in the community. And I think the approach or lack of at this point in time, is like we're at an impasse if there's no movement going forward in this area and excuses being given in some respects. So let the state do it, let, let the state handle it. And the average time duration for the state to handle something of this nature, and I'm not being negative, is anywhere from 18 months to two years, when in fact we can address some issues and educate some people within a day or address some issues within 30 days and less than 180 days as mandated by law. So for me, I mean, the pain that I'm feeling and some others are maybe that of adjustment, a disinvestment, and a lack of responsiveness to people that have concern. And so it's though there's a need for a commission of this type in this township. I go back to last year in terms of presenting suggestions and recommendations from the state level who would give us basically with it type of support that we need at this point in time to move this thing forward. And in order for conversations to evolve, I basically would have to initiate those conversations. And another excuse given that we lost your sound.
Mr. Taylor. Dr. Taylor, Taylor, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Review it and have it approved. And we haven't gotten past that point. What I've done is that we've gotten together, we infusion the recommendations and the suggestions in the current ordinance to see what that would look like. And we sent it to the state level for review. That didn't take that much time to do. Dr. Taylor, can I ask, this is Commissioner Brockington. Can I ask you a question real quick? You said we, who's the we? Because my understanding- We, is we, I we meaning, said we. I, I didn't get to the we yet. We meaning the people that we work with on the revisions that were suggested by the state level. When I say we, I want to see what this township, what the commissioners were going to do at this point in time. And I had to go back into the ring again and say, well, why wasn't people that may have been interested in being on the commission afforded the opportunity to apply to be on the mission like all the other committees were? I should not have had to do that. Actually, actually Mr. Chair, the, 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 the level of that's interest the at yeah. that point in time, then that should have went out with everybody else. Then I'm asked the question, do I have anybody that's interested? I'm not going to stack the deck and pick and choose who should be on this commission. That should come from the township and putting together a realistic process, a selection process, a orientation, and ongoing training. Dr. Taylor, can I interrupt you for one moment? And I'm going to hand this off to Commissioner Brockington also. All of the townships committees, all of them, are open to anyone who wants to volunteer. The biggest problem we had with the Human Relations Committee was we didn't have people attending. And I'm gonna hand that off to Irv if he'd like to continue it. But the no, fact is no. we've been waiting for people to step up. So when you say the word we, we, I'd like to have some of the we send in their names to the township and say, I'd like to be on the Human Relations Commission. Committee. committee. Right. Because yeah. we will vet their information and put them on the committee. Right now, we're missing those people. Right. And, and Dr. Taylor, that's, I, I was going to say the same thing. We have put this Pushed out there, it. just like we do. With that. I was asked the question, do I have anybody that's interested in being on the commission? Yes, I do. That was my response in an email. But we haven't heard from those people. I know you have not heard from those meetings because this communication to the commissioners had to prevail. That's incorrect. No, 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 These are announced no, no. every single it's, year. It's, All the openings are announced every single year. We have public meetings that bring the people who are interested in front of the board of commissioners, virtually or otherwise. We go through their credentials to make sure they're appropriate for the committee. We vote on them as a whole and we appoint them to the committee. But we have to have the people before we can appoint them. Now, in all, excuse me, but in all fairness, uh, it wasn't until Dr. Taylor pointed out that no one on the previous Human Relations Commission had been recontacted as uh, our other committees, uh, standing committees, advisory committees, and it wasn't announced as an open committee. Uh, when the others right. were. Right. It was only when Dr. Taylor pointed out that it was missing and that those folks had not been contacted that we actually put out that information for the Human Relations Commission. So that that didn't get done. And, you know, it, it, you talk about transparency. Um, no, there has not been support to move on with Human Relations Commission. But Anne, uh, part, and of, part I, I of have that to disagree with you. I disagree it, with it you. A, it was a bigger discussion than just yes. the people on the committee. Yes. There, we, it is we a were, bigger discussion. We That's being, correct. We were being advised at staff time and legal costs. And frankly, the fact that there is a process in the state of Pennsylvania. And right now, uh, as, as the facilities has pointed out, and all the other problems we're dealing with, we have a really overburdened staff. And 
and that yeah. that was factored in. And these in are some of the, not to move forward. These are it. some of the things that need to be stated publicly if that's the decision of the board. And, and I well, think that's what Dr. Taylor is asking about. Okay. Um, no, nope, I agree. Presenting uh, his concerns about the uh, disinvestment of that commission. And so the question is why? Go ahead. Go ahead, Commissioner Brockington. We, ha we have been waiting for people to join this commission. The, the Civil Rights Task Force changed our names so we would not confuse people of the two because they were so close. And we kept putting out there saying, we want people to join the Human Relations Commission. And every time we put it out, we got nothing back. It wasn't like we weren't trying to shut this down. We wanted it to go Thanks. forward. Herb, no Herb, if I may, Herb, that's not what we're saying. What we what we're saying is that when the advertisement went out for all the committees in the township, nothing went out for the human relations. I, 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 I and then, and then, I remember seeing it on there. I remember no, no, it didn't it initially. It didn't initially go out. I sent you an email and also Ann that the human relations commission was not included. Well, when was the last time you guys met? Because there were people on this committee commission and then did you guys have regular meetings i mean i'm not against this i want it to i want it to happen but we need bodies and we can we can we can talk until the cows come home but if we don't get people to volunteer what are we supposed to do as commissioners if we don't get people to step up to say i want to be on this commission I, I want the commission to happen, but we need to have people. Yeah, to be that's, on un this commission. that's understood. That's understood. And you'll, you'll have people in that. And my earlier comment was that I was not the one that was going to stack the deck. There, well, are, people, the there, deck. Are, there are people that are interested in being on the commission, and you will have those who's that you referred to within the next 10 business days. My attorney friend, Commissioner Armin. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not wearing an attorney hat, but a, but a commissioner hat. What, what I, um, it, it, it is clear that there is um, an interest in this citizens committee um, from our citizens. Uh, it, it is clear that, uh, it, that it needs some attention. Uh, and what I, would, what I would suggest is that we ask our staff um, to sort of liaise with, um, and uh, Dr. Taylor, excuse me, I, I, I called you Mr. Taylor earlier. I apologize for that. That's, that's quite all right. I've been called other names. <laughs> there you go. Me, me too. Um, but uh, per perhaps we could have uh, staff liaise with Dr. Taylor uh, about the best uh, suggestions for moving forward and having a discussion on uh, how the committee should look whether it should whether it should continue whether it should continue in the same form or, or what have you and, and then come back to the board with some recommendations i'm okay with doing that i guess i want to caution that we that the commissioners have had a discussion with staff uh and uh staff advised us uh not to continue forward with this commission uh, and I thought we had accepted that uh, conclusion, but we can certainly reopen the decision. We can always reopen any discussions. So, um, but my question now would be if staff has been opposed and said no, who would be it? Dr. Taylor, that would be me that you would um, work with. And the only reason why uh, our concern was is staff time to be able to um, handle this, handle the board, and then also having uh, a legal advisor to them. So there's a lot of particulars. So um, if we can step through those with you, um, then I think then uh, we'd have a better handle on staff of what the commitment of the time uh, that we would have. So feel free to contact me. We'll sit down, we'll work through this and see what we can come up with together. 
And please let us know if there are additional legal costs that the township you you're talking about uh, council perhaps needs to be involved. Yeah, and and short of those concerns, I think what to publicly state that prevention of discrimination, responding to discrimination, uh, being proactive in terms of education, these are all things that are valuable and that I think we value. Um, the Civil Rights Task Force is also dealing with those issues. And so it could be that there is a method to go forward that may be short of the full legal, at least temporarily, short of the full legal uh, requirements that our staff is reluctant to take on or unable, really is a fairer way to say it, uh, unable to take on at this time, but that we can still pursue through some of the other methods. Okay, so I don't think it's necessarily an all or nothing. Uh, I think there's a lot of sentiment to go forward uh, in, in some capacity. So hopefully we can look toward some kind of uh, steps forward for those goals. Okay, are we ready to move on? Okay, you still have another hand. Liza oh, I'm sorry, uh, Liza. Hi, everyone. So, I mean, you know, I was here two years ago talking about this very issue that we have a human relations commission on the website that we had like bunk contact information that if people are having a civil rights issue in their township, they have a right to um, like have support and help. And I, I, I remember you in specific, um, Commissioner Nar is talking about how proud you were to pass this legislation, especially because um, of, of what <laughs> Mr. England is saying in the chat about the protections for LGBT folks. Mm -hmm. And I'm shocked. I, I think I just, my hand went up when I heard you, first it was like, well, we don't have the people. And then when it was, well, you haven't been asking for the people. And I dropped that link in there where the Civil Rights Task Force and the Human Relations Commission were left off of the list. That doesn't take time or money or energy or staff to put civil rights <laughs> committees on that list, right? But I'm shocked to hear you say now that, oh, well, we have a state system and, and we're not going to do that when, when there's pushback. So, so, I mean, make it clear, like if you don't wanna do this Human Relations Commission, then, you know, take it off the website. Stop saying that you're willing to do it. Stop bragging about passing, right? That if you're gonna give up on it, then give up on it. But this victim blaming, this saying we don't have the people or we don't have this or we don't have that or, or getting defensive or, right? This is not necessary. We've been asking this for two years and been getting the runaround. You know, do we wanna form this committee or not, right? Do we value the citizen committees that are working towards civil rights or not? You know, and, and I'm shocked. I, I was really, believe in all this time we would get it together at some point until tonight now all of a sudden I'm, I'm feeling very pessimistic about the idea that there will be an hrc in Cheltenham, and that's upsetting it really is so i am going to encourage you to to think again about can you do little things to make this get off the ground is there something that you do have the capability of doing right um because it's not enough just to say well the committee's there people need to find it and then come to it and then submit their resume and their cover letter and they have to do all of this stuff themselves or or i think that well taylor's right like he shouldn't just be stacking the deck with his friends right like this should be like a real township committee treated the same as all the other township committees yeah. or if you're not committed to this issue then then i mean we have a website that says that there are members of this commission that has been alive for a long time and we've said it quite a few times now you know and that we said had to say it a few times about not advertising for people to volunteer it's not their job to know you know it's our job to communicate with them as a township so I, I really encourage you to rethink you know and and maybe come back and like is there something that we can do or are we going to delete that page off the website thank you thank you and by the way we we had this commission in force for many years 
after the legislation was passed. The legislation was passed ex expanding rights beyond what the state has as far as human rights. We, we set up the commission. There were no complaints filed against the commission. The commission and the legislation to me are separate issues. The, if, if, you're, if the commission is just there for show and there have been no complaints and in more recent years, uh, having no meetings or nobody's interested in continuing it, now I'm hearing otherwise that perhaps people are, but I don't think that uh, setting up the commission, um, uh, I don't, wh whether there's a commission or not, does not take away from the statement in Cheltenham Township and the legislation that we passed uh, giving rights to LGBT and LGBTQ and others uh, that are beyond what the state uh, provides. So I view them uh, perhaps a little differently. Any other questions or comments? I'd just like to know where are we at now at this moment in terms of moving forward? I, I thought it was left that you're going to have a conversation with our township manager. All right, I just I just needed to hear that again. Make sure I was hearing this correctly. That sounds great, Dr. Taylor. Look forward okay. to working. And you still have one more person waiting, Julie. Oh, Elliott. I'm sorry. I, I didn't see that. Uh, Julie Elliott. Hi, how are you? Um, my name is Julie Elliott. I live on Chelsea Road, 1800 block. Um, so I was just, I'm sorry I was away. I was just, but I was listening to everybody, um, you know, just doing the dishes. I'm sorry. Um, so with the committee, let me just, I know you said you didn't hear any, you won't, like it has to be complaints and stuff, but I think the committee would be good because to have events and stuff to bring people together, as you can see, I'm sorry I didn't take off my, one of my titles. I'm a, um, SCI, um, SCIU local 668 chapter chair. Um, you know, and part of our pledge with our union is that we try to bring together unity. So, you know, with the organiz you know, with the group, I mean, not just hearing complaints, but trying to bring unity together within the citizens of Sheltenham Township should be one of the plates also. Um, I'm here to join any committee. Um, I haven't been active because I had, you know, just family things going on, but I am available at this point to join any committee that anyone will welcome me to, to help any way I can as a citizen of Sheltenham Township. So um, if any of you want to take my name, um, you know, I'll put my information, my phone number in the chat and you can give me a call, let me know, you know where I can fit in and I will be glad to do so. Thank you for letting me speak. Highly appreciate it. Thank you for your input. and. I'll, I'll just mention, uh, you're welcome to join any committee, but uh, so I'm not sure if you heard, there is a civil rights uh, commission or committee task force. Um, task force. Thank you, Ann. Um, mm -hmm. you, you might find that of interest. You might find other committees of interest. Uh, why don't you, why don't we announce the procedure for getting, uh, you know, for applying to be on a committee so that anyone else out there who might be interested uh, can submit uh, Thank you, Lynn, because I was going to grab her and tell her she could be on the Lamont Bahar. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, there is a there is a procedure. Anybody going to no, announce what that is? Allison, would you like to announce that? Or? Uh, excuse cool. me. This is Ashley. Oh, Ashley. Thank you, Ashley. Yeah, uh, I can speak to that real quick. Um, <laughs> so anybody who is expressing interest in sitting on a committee um, would just have to submit um, a resume. Um, a cover letter explaining um, why they want to be a part of the committee. Um, and then you must be a registered voter within the township. And the resume doesn't have to be a 12 page curriculum data. You're not being yeah. hired for the job. We just need to know, have an idea of who you are and what you're all about. Yeah. Just you. a little backgrounder and, and your name and address and contact information. As a matter okay. of fact, in Indicative of that question and the process, uh, if I go on to 15C, we are going to be appointing uh, with the, uh, with the uh, consent and uh, counsel of my fellow commissioners, 
I'm recommending the appointment of Sandra Stevens, who lives at 7701 Woodlawn Avenue, Elkins Park, recommending her appointment to the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Committee. Any comments or questions? No, but I think okay. it's, a, it's, a, it's a great way to uh, put it in front of people, a real example of the fact that right. it's what something she's interested in, she submitted a, a simple bit of information, it got right in front of us and we we're pointing her to the committee. It's really not difficult, it's just the process. Yeah, we're looking, we're looking for volunteers and frankly, uh, to, to emphasize that point from Commissioner Pransky, uh, uh, Ms. Elliott, if, if you end up joining a committee and you don't like it, you can always leave it. <laughs> there's, there's not a big salary on these committees, there's no salary, there's volunteers and so, <laughs> Uh, yeah. it's, it's, your, it's the amount of time and effort that you wish to put into those committees is very much appreciated. We have a lot of talented and experienced and uh, great citizens in this township who contribute in so many different ways. Many of them are on committees, others contribute in other ways, but, uh, but yes, this is an indication. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Believe me, I, I, I don't get paid for the union stuff. So <laughs> that's it. it's all a voluntary thing. Yes. And you have to be dedicated. So. Yes, dedicated, giving back to the community. It's good. I agree. Um, thank you, so. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank for you. Forward. Yeah. All those in favor of the appointment of Sandra Stevens, say aye. 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 I have an item, uh, Mr. President, to a couple yes. items. New business, go ahead, Commissioner Zygman. Uh, I'd like to make an announcement. Clearly, I'm going from serious and substantial to something a little more mundane. Uh, Saturday, June 4th, will be the 64th annual fishing derby at Kleinheinz Pond with a 9 a.m. start. So um, given that it's a couple of weeks from now, we should start to get the publicity out on that. There are many members of the community who like to participate in that event on Tokeny Creek Parkway, halfway down between uh, New Second Street and Central Avenue. So just reminding you of that. So that's that's one item. I assume there's no more comments on that. And then I do have another item I like to add, item E. Um, and is our township solicitor still online? Yes, I see him. Uh, so, so Ed, if you would, um, I'd like the community to be aware of the fact that we, in fact, have received a lawsuit from the former owner of 222 Church Road, David Bernstein, and he's taken action against the township, the board, as well as the uh, proposed developer on 222 Church. Would you just spend a minute and, and share that with the community so they know I think it's certainly a, a, a worthwhile piece of information so people understand the depth and di dimension of things that we are dealing with um, both on a day in, day out basis in an unexpected fashion. Sure, I'm happy to. So um, yes, the township was uh, notified today that a complaint was filed by uh, Mr. Bernstein. It's a land development um, appeal. It was filed um, with the uh, Court of Common Pleas in Montgomery County. And um, I think most of the community is familiar with the 222 Church Road uh, project and the um, appeal seeks to um, overturn the um, approval that was granted uh, for many of the reasons that were uh, cited during the public comment uh, sections of the meeting uh, at that time. So uh, we're in the process of reviewing the complaint, um, determining next steps, and certainly the, um, the developer will be taking the active, an active role in that matter. Councilor, just one minor correction. Uh, to what you say, it was a provisional approval. It wasn't a final approval. And a preliminary one. Correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's all. I just wanted, I wanted the community to be aware there, there was a great deal of uh, communication and transparency in that process and multiple public meetings. And despite all that, we still occasionally get into a situation where we have to deal with the implications of somebody being unhappy with decisions that we make, we're prepared to deal with that as well. Thank you. And unfortunately, incur additional costs on a continuing. Uh, Commissioner Norris, apparently Commissioner Holland is also not happy with something that Mitch said. Oh, Commissioner Holland, I didn't see your hand. Go ahead. 
No, no, no worries. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. And, uh, you know, I, most of the time I, I do agree with Commissioner Zygmuntfeld. So uh, <laughs> just one one quick piece of, of new business. So multiple messages around uh, the intersection between on Lime Kiln Pike between uh, sort of 309 where you come off the highway and Sheltonham Avenue. You sort of, you know, go down and then you come back up there and there's a bridge there. Um, you know, so Bob and I had a conversation about this, this spot, and there's a lot of trash and debris. Uh, we did some research to identify who was responsible. Um, that is a PennDOT road. Uh, we did reach out to uh, our state rep who uh, informed us that, um, you know, it's really impossible for PennDOT to, uh, you know, maintain, uh, you know, uh, I guess, sections of road like that and recommended some other actions like um, adopt a highway and so on and so forth, which we'll probably explore. Uh, but Bob, I just wanted to circle back. Did, did we reach out to PennDOT on that? And do we have any movement? And if not, um, do we have a, an alternative plan to, to address that area? Um, I have not heard back from PennDOT, but our public works director has it scheduled for staff to go out there to beginning tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Got it. Okay. Well, the, the, thank you. Thank you for that. The only thing that I would mention um, is just be careful because it's it's that's a very tight roadway. Tight. Yes, it and is. And all of the trash is right along the the, the traffic line. And mm -hmm. um, you know, the, you know, that time in the morning, there's still a fair amount of traffic there. So, um, yeah, just please be careful. And thank you for that. Thank you, Commissioner Holland. Commissioner Brockington, you have some new business. I do. I want to sort of turn this portion over to the chief so he can speak about the event on Monday um, with Breaking Bread. I just want him to make sure he brings that up. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, as everyone knows, well, we're planning to have a community event on May 23rd here at Curtis Hall uh, in the evening uh, at dinner. It's called Breaking Bread. Uh, this is a community initiative initiative that was brought forward. Uh, they, they want to have a meeting with, with the police department here to get to know one another. I think it's a tremendous idea. A lot of work has gone into it. Uh, Liza Morris and Bethany Strasky uh, and Eileen Wass from my office as well in coordinating this event along with the help from the township manager in uh, uh, getting this off the ground. So I'm very help I'm thankful for all the help we received in getting this off the ground. I'm looking forward to this to be a great opportunity for the police department to get to know our community and our community to get to know us. I think this is a great step in the right direction. I look to build upon this, and I, I'm looking forward to a great evening of getting to know one another and building, and building trust and bonds with people in our community. So I think that's it's a great start for us, and I'm looking forward to the event. Yeah, in my understanding, there's still there's still spots available if you want to show up. There's still room. And thank you, Chief. My I have a question in in light of the uh, increased uh, positive tests for COVID that are going around. Uh, is is that event going to take place outside in the tent? Commissioner, that's an excellent, excellent point. We're fortunate that the tent is up now. We do have access to the tent outside. If need be, we can move tables outside. I'm trying to limit the size of the event to make it manageable so we can spread out a great deal, um, wear masks and, and protect one another. So we are taking safety precautions and we will probably move it outside, yes. Thank you. Yeah. And, and no, no, I have one more thing. Oh, sure. I'm sorry. No, and, and this one's actually for our chief. Um, and, and just for the chief and for our officers, just saying sort of happy National Police Week. I understand this is National Police Week, which runs from May 15th to May 21st. And I just wanted to share that with, with the chief and with your officers. Thank you very much, Commissioner. I'll pass that on. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Dan. I'm done. Thank you. Commissioner Pransky? Yeah, one a simple item to add to new business, just public information. The chief is still here, and I saw uh, Chief Lynch was still here. There is a sinkhole. We all know that there is a sinkhole on Shelton Hills Drive. Please stay away from it. It's not the Grand Canyon. It's not something to be photographed, looked into, or played around with. It's something that this township is managing and is looking into every possible avenue of getting it repaired, but stay away from it. It's for your own safety and ours. All right, thank you. Not seeing any other new business, I'm going to go to Citizens Forum. Uh, Darlene Melton, you have something for Citizens Forum? 
Um, yes. Um, first, uh, thank you, um, Commissioner Pransky, for mentioning that the approval of the 222 was provisional. But let me ask a question because I was confused. I was listening to that um, meeting and I don't know if that's what got us into a lawsuit or not, but what I found with other developments that the word approval seems to give them the gung ho, you know what I mean? And then they kind of overstep and overdo. So, or maybe this is a legal question that um, that could be answered. So what was really the, the, the point of doing a provisional um, approval? There were a lot of conditions placed on the developer that they had to meet before the board could consider a final approval to the process. So what we gave them was approval of those things that didn't need adjustment to saying, okay, assuming you do all these other things, then <laughs> we can consider actually pass, moving this forward. But until those things are done, this is just preliminary. People unfortunately okay, see yeah, the word approval attached to anything and they think, oh, well, it's a done. No, it's not done. That's why it's just preliminary. Okay, and that's what I was figuring that we, we thought it was preliminary, but yeah, because it happens sometimes in, in the past. Okay, um, since the police chief is here, hi. <laughs> you, yeah, fan, no, chief. <laughs> you don't want to see what I look like now. How you doing? How you been? Um, since you're here and I'm here, um, could we have a, a community police officer again? I'm only asking this because in going around, it was brought to, to my attention that there may be some drug activity closer to where the you know the children are at um at the near the community center uh, and those um where i live at i kind of keep an eye on the park that i'm close to um it the lot is now empty so anything that's just standing there looking like they're waiting for something hanging out in cars look a little suspicious so I uh, just wanted to bring to your attention just for community safety um, issue. If you see something, call the police. I call the police so much that, you know, I think they got my name down on the thing. And they... <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Darlene. Uh, Teresa Camarada. Yes, good evening. Um, I just wanted to... Uh, uh, put out a quick thank you uh, for the announcement, Mr. Zinkowski, that the traffic review uh, study is finally in. And um, I let folks know on text tonight, I'm getting a lot of response. I'll send you a list of names for copies to go out tomorrow. Thank you. And uh, I was going to ask about that before you made the announcement. And I was also going to ask are we waiting for the review before we step into the lawn signs? Because the lawn signs were discussed a number of times over the past couple months, whether they were purchased, et cetera. They've been ordered, they're expected soon. Oh, okay, so they're not in house yet. Okay, I right. they haven't been received. Mm -hmm. I believe the date uh, is expected around the 7th of June. There we go. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. Okay. And we'll, I'll send you a list for sending out copies. Tomorrow. Thanks for your input. Thanks a lot. Earl Stam. Citizens Far. far yeah. Am I needed? Okay. I had three quick items. Number one, I had seen in one of the last meetings, they were talking about a wooded lot credit for the stormwater fee. I just wondered what was happening with that. Anybody know on stormwater fee credit? Well, Mr. Stam, I don't know. What, I don't know specifically to what you're referring to in terms of a wooded lot, but that but but I think tonight we, we passed the stormwater uh, uh, fee uh, credit fee credit uh, policy, so it, it should be uh, it should be a part of the uh, minutes for tonight's meeting and and also uh, probably from uh, public works if I'm not mistaken. 
Okay, my next item was I noticed that the water jet at the pond at Curtis isn't working. And I know we need that to keep mosquitoes away. I wonder what's happening there. I'll respond to that, commissioners. Uh, recently, um, we were notified of the pond just pretty much dying. It's a, uh, it's over 20 years old, I believe. Uh, there's actually a proposal I'm coming to you in the very near future that just got on my desk today from Bob Dominic about getting it completely replaced. The replacement cost is uh, only a few hundred bucks less than having it all refabricated. So I think we're going to recommend to get a brand new one versus a refabricated one for only a couple hundred bucks uh, less. It makes more sense to go with the new one. Uh, it's just like we've got in the other ponds going forward. So uh, it will be replaced in uh, due time and uh, you'll be seeing that coming in front of you very soon. Okay. And last but not least, I supported and I still support selling our sewer system by aqua but you should know i read an article in the inquirer our water fees are going up 10 percent and cheltenham our sewer fees are going to go up 65 percent carl we're aware that it was actually yes. discussed earlier in the meeting i'm sorry i didn't hear that i didn't hear that we're we're, we're aware of that information but but thank you it was discussed earlier tonight earl I, I was not in this meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's it for Citizens Forum. So I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn. I move. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you to staff, my fellow commissioners, and to the residents. Have a good evening. Good night, all.